Good morning YouTube viewers and welcome to my channel and to all my new viewers or if you're looking at this video for the first time uh, thanks for stopping by and uh, I'm going to uh, demonstrate how I cut a uh, green sapphire today and uh, this stone weighs six carats I've already weighed it and uh, it's got a couple small inclusions, which I'm not going to worry about. Still should make a very nice stone. The color is pretty uniform throughout. Very light green color. And uh, the shape is good for a, a round brilliant, which is what I'm going to do. Sapphire is a pretty hard gem material. It's rated at 9 on the Mohs hardness scale. Diamond being the hardest at 10. So it makes a very durable gemstone. Alright, I'm going to grind a flat surface so that I can attach my dop stick here. I'm going to use this flat dot and attach the stone. And I'm going to use fasting wax, which I like to start off with. And when I transfer the stone <coughs> to a second dot stick, I will use epoxy glue, five minute epoxy glue. Okay, I'll get started on it. All right, I've got my stone here. I'm gonna to try to grind a flat spot using the 600 lamp. Try to keep from grinding my fingernails and fingers tips down here. It's gonna be kind of hard. It's hard to keep hold of too. That looks pretty good. Here I've got the stone dopped and ready to cut. So I'll put it in the machine and I'll start the rounding process first. I'll get a completely round stone. And then I'll start cutting the pavilion facets to a culet point. Here we've got our angle set at 90 degrees. I lowered my stone all the way down here. So I start to touch. I back up just a little bit here. Now we're going to set our stone to freewheel. We're releasing the teeth from the index gear. I lift put the little plunger in its place and now the index gear and the stone can freewheel. Now I can get a, a completely circular stone a nice circle out of it. Alright, we'll get started. Hey, we're getting there. All right, I've set it 90 degrees and I am cutting the facets, the girdle facets. Decided I wanted to facet the girdle instead of leaving it smooth.
see this is cutting the main facet. I put a 600 grit lap on the machine. Okay, I finished cutting my main facets. I'm using 42 degrees for this, for those. And uh, I've got one little spot right there, the shiny little spot that's, uh, it's a little deeper than the rest of the stone there. So uh, my break facets should cut right through that and take care of that little spot. And you can see our, uh, inclusion should be coming up here somewhere you can see the inclusion there it is but it's not it's not terrible it's just going to have to stay i'm not going to make the stone that much smaller to, to cut that inclusion out I'll start cutting the brake facets and see if we can clean up that little shiny spot there. Here I've cut all the brake facets and I've polished, pre-polished the mains too. This has all been done using a 3000 grit zinc plus lap and gear loose lapidary. Okay, I've just used the 8000 grit compound on a copper lap and I have pre polished the brakes in the mains and uh, see the uh, inclusion showing up much better now. Since I'm going to change from 8,000 grit to 60,000 grit diamond, I've got to thoroughly clean my stone, so I use soapy water. And I really clean the stone very well make sure my fingers are clean too. And I'll do this a second time. Now I've installed the bat lap, which is a tin lap, and uh, I put 60,000 diamond compound on the lap. And I'm doing some of uh, the pavilion facets here. Turning at a very slow speed. Okay, I'm finished with this gemstone. And I added eight culet facets right at the culet tip there. My reason for doing that was I had a slight inclusion right at the culet tip and it wouldn't polish out so I uh, cut these culet facets at 38 degrees on the star settings, which is midway between each main facet. And that took care of my problem. And it's really going to add brilliance to the gemstone also. Okay, we're going to use epoxy on the transfer. I 
like I got too much there on one side. These things are always hard to get right. Our glue is mixed. Put some cavity there. Lock the little nut, there's knob here. Got to uh, make sure it doesn't run down the side, so I just kind of keep moving it until the glue sets up. Shouldn't take too long. This is supposed to be five minutes. No, actually, it's supposed to be one minute. It takes a little bit longer than that, and I, I don't even start to cut the stone until 24 hours is up. I understand you can heat. You could put the whole transfer jig and stone in the oven and heat it to 200 degrees and uh, you could start to facet after an hour or so, but I'm not in that much of a hurry. Okay, I've uh, removed the first dop I started with from the stone using heat. So I'm now ready to uh, start cutting the crown of the stone. I'll take a second to talk about <clears throat> which kind of loop I use, and it's a uh, Velomo 10X. And, uh, these work very nice. These are around $30 to $35 dollars in US dollars. And uh, they're very good for the, for the money, they're a good value. Got all eight main facets cut with a 600 grit flat. And next, I'm going to put a 3000 grit a zinc lap on and I'm going to pre polish these. And then I'll move to cutting the uh, brake facets using that same 3000 grit lap. So far, the uh, inclusion is just under the surface there. At this point, I've uh, pre-polished the main facets with 3000 grit compound. And I've moved on to cutting the brake facets using the same 3000 uh, zinc lap. They're cutting pretty pretty quickly. For, this is sapphire pretty hard, but I'm not having any problems cutting in the brake facets with the pre-polished lap. All right, I'll continue and get those all done. Cutting the star facets at 22 degrees this time. And I'm cutting with the 3000 grit lap. It's a little bit slow doing it this way, but I decided I'd rather just have the one lap to deal with and not have to go back to a 600 and then go to 3000 again. So it's a little bit slow, but I'm getting, I'm on the last star facet right now. All right, the star facets are all cut. Next step is to uh, clean the stone very well, soap and water, clean my hands, put my 8,000 uh, charged copper lap on, and do a quick 8,000 pre-polish, then we'll be on to the bat lap with 60,000 grit compound. 
We're going to take a second to show you uh, how an UltraTech index gear looks. See here we have the 96 and we have a little circle. And here we have a star, which is number six index. It's halfway between your main settings, which on around brilliant, you'd have a 96 and a 12 for your main settings. So your star facet facets are halfway between your mains. So Ultratech puts the little asterisks for your star settings at every point. So that makes it very quick and easy when you're cutting. You don't have to look at the numbers. If you want to cut your mains, you just cut at the circles. And you cut the stars where the star asterisk is. And when you cut your brake facet, you're cutting three index teeth away from your main. So it'd be 57, 63 for your brakes. So you just go to each, each one that's marked here, 69 and 75 for your brakes. You go back to 81 for your next brake, 87. Anyway, that's just something Ultratech does. It makes it easy to cut, makes, speeds up your cutting. You don't have to think about a number, really. Okay, all of the star facets are cut and polished. I'm ready to start cutting the crown. You can see our, uh, our inclusion is showing up pretty well here but it remains to be seen how it's going to be when it's finished. I still think it's going to be a very nice gemstone. Okay, I'll start cutting the crown of the table. All right, I've set my angle at 45 degrees. Check my cheater adjustment to make sure it's zeroed out. I have set my 45 degree table adapter to be completely flat with the lap and then tighten the two screws and we're ready to get started here. Get our water going. Got to lower our stone a little bit. Okay, and we're starting to cut. Okay, I've used my dual zone lap here to uh, finish this table. I'm all finished with the stone now. This is a 8,000 grit on the copper on the outer rim, ring, and the inner ring is bat lap material. It's a uh, tin lap. And I use 60,000 compound for the final polishing on this zone here. All right, the next step is to uh, take the stone carefully off the top, and I'll do that by heating it, and uh, then I'll be ready to show. Here we have our finished gemstone.
Okay, let's weigh this jam. Actually, it's saying two. Let's try it again. I'm going to call it a two carat. We started with six carats and we ended up with two, so that's a 30% recovery rate, which is pretty good. And the stone measures 7.35 millimeters in diameter.